Hello, TRM Secrets. Um, so today, um, I don't have anybody on live with me, but I wanted to cover a few points that have been uh, raised with me recently. Uh, and I think this might help uh, those of you that are in the business vault um, mentoring and coaching uh, group. So um, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about those things and um, I'll upload that into the business vault so that you can um, refer to it in future uh, or refer to it straight away, depending on where you are in your business development. So well, the sorts of things that I get asked uh, quite frequently from tea room owners specifically is help on maybe the top three uh, issues uh, or challenges that uh, tea room owners face. And it can vary, but the three most common issues kind of keep coming up again and again and again. So I thought I would uh, just cover those three issues and give you a little insight and some of uh, my experience and training um, that I've had over, well, oh gosh, quite a long time now. So the first one is marketing and promotional strategies. Now, as a tea room uh, owner, you're probably looking at quite a local customer base and you're looking for repeat business. And I know that many owners are struggling with effective marketing and promotional strategies to attract new customers and keep the existing ones coming back again and again. And to do that, you really need to have a reason for them to come back. So helping uh, you to develop a comprehensive marketing plan that includes both online and offline strategies, such as social media marketing, email marketing, which everybody should be doing. Everybody should be owning their own list, collecting emails wherever they can, and really going deep into email marketing. It really does help remind your previous customers uh, that you are there still and of the fun, exciting new events or menus that you're going to be putting together and also looking at working in local partnerships. Now, when I had my tea rooms in Indy, we would partner with the schools, with historical properties, with events. Uh, we would do Zubilation each year. We would work with um, a local uh, food fair and offer free samples. And it was great publicity, but it was also great uh, opportunity to have other people that were ne not necessarily knew about you or not necessarily in your circle of influence, but to actually taste your tea or your sandwiches. And if you can get involved in those, that can really help to increase your visibility as well as your customer engagement and get them to come in and see you more frequently. Second uh, area I want to talk about is menu development and innovation. And as a tea room owner, you really need to be consistently looking to update your menu to meet uh, the changes that customers uh, have in their preferences, but also to stand out in a competitive market. And one of the things we did uh, would be to change the menu seasonally which is also a good opportunity to increase your prices when you make a change to your menu. And as things are going up and up and up at the moment in price, it's really important that you are increasing your prices and doing a menu change is a good opportunity for you to do that. So changing your menu seasonally, maybe having a scone of the week or a scone of the day, depending on how busy you are and how many scones you actually make during the week, um, but having a scone of the day or scone of the week. And then if you're serving lunches like we did, we would have a soup of the day as well. So things were always kind of changing. There was a few things that always stayed on the menu. You could always get afternoon tea. You could always get a good scone and you always get a Victoria sandwich cake. That was what I did. And there might be things that you want to do that are unique to your business and basically you do you but do keep it changing so that it becomes interesting and it gives you a competitive uh, edge in your market and uh, also think about uh, investigating various trends in tea and food offerings and looking at optimizing your menu for profitability i know when we start out we have this vision and i know i did that uh, it was going to be um you know, lots of little fiddly things and 
we'd have lots of little bits and and then when you get really really super busy some of those things have to fall by the wayside otherwise you're just completely stuck in the kitchen or it takes you far too long to get the food out so we need to look at how to optimize the menu for profitability and don't just think ingredients think about your staff time as well because staff time and uh, ingredients cost go together to make your total cost of your offering and obviously introducing seasonal items and again if you're changing each season that helps certainly when we come to the holidays that's an amazing time to go a little berserk doing very different seasonal things there and uh, also looking at uh, where you're sourcing th th things from um making sure that you're sourcing quality tea and ingredients, but you're also keeping an eye on the price points too. So number three, let's have a look at your operational efficiency and cost management. Now I've touched on it when we were looking at menu development, but often we can face real challenges related to managing costs and optimizing operations and therefore ensuring that profitability is there. Don't you working your socks off or burning out? Uh, because if you go down, your business is probably going to go downhill too, and we don't want that. So make sure that you are building your team, but you're also being very conscious of optimizing your operations. And what do I mean by that? Well, well that's the processes that you put in place. How can you uh, make a lot of things quickly and easily? Tray bakes, for example, are a great idea. And then they can be cut up into small finger-sized pieces that go on your top tier. How can you um, make uh, your sandwich making streamlined? And there are ways and means of doing that so that you are making them quickly, storing them effectively, and then plating them efficiently. And those are some of the things that I can help you with when you come into the training programs, when you have me as your personal coach, I can go through all those yummy ways of really making the process. And if you have repeatable ways of doing things, you have consistency. It also means that you can bring in new people. You can bring in either a cook or a baker, or even front of house for that matter, and they can start taking over some of those critical processes and keep them consistent. So it doesn't matter if you're doing it, or if your second in command is doing it, or one of the team is doing it, it's all consistent and everybody knows what they're doing. And that's really where good staff training comes into play as well. And um, you might also need to have a look at your inventory management and uh, look at not, never running out, but never having too much. And it's a very fine line, but knowing at what point you need to reorder, not when it's gone, but maybe when there's one or two or three left, and then you need to order and put another order in for more so that you have that optimum balance between never running out, but also not having so much stock that then uh, food spoils and then you're wasting money in throwing good food away because it's it's turned bad. And also a way of perhaps negotiation as well. Can you negotiate some of those costs? Can you get bulk discounts if you do order uh, in bulk and have somewhere safe to store it? Um, and uh, you'd be surprised what can freeze. And you'd also be surprised what we can hold in an airtight container. And obviously I'm thinking about tea in that case. So in addition to these sort of three key issues, uh, there are other things that you might want to address, like financial planning. How are you going to manage your cash flow? Are you going to look for investment or investors? Customer service training. How are you training your people? What are the standards that you're maintaining and want to be maintained in your business, even when you're not there? And creating that unique atmosphere that sets your tea room apart. It might be the theme. It might be the welcome that you give. Remember, people don't always remember what you said or what you did, but they will always remember the way you made them feel. And that, I think, is one of the fundamental cornerstones of every good tea room. Anyway, until next time, see you soon. Bye for now.